Um, um, yeah, so if you don't know how to factor sum and difference of cubes, you'll find it useful uh, to learn how to um, when you're looking at integrals that look like this one, yeah? Here in the denominator, we have a difference of cubes. By the way, in my advanced algebra one videos, among other factoring, I show you how to factor difference in sum of cubes. So check that out. But yeah, um, difference of cubes uh, of the type x cubed minus one cubed factors in this way. And um, this quadratic that comes of this factoring uh, will never be factorable. That is, this quadratic is irreducible. And um, Notice that this quadratic is the quadratic that made up the denominator of our integrand in uh, part nine, although knowing how to do the integral in part nine is not directly useful in um, solving this integral. Anyway, uh, once you factor this denominator appropriately in this fashion, what you are to do is partial fraction decomposition, which recall we did in part eight. And, um, so, you know, uh, partial fraction decomposition allows us to take a certain rational uh, function or expression and write it as a sum of uh, more than one rational expressions or functions. And so here, because we can't factor the quadratic anymore, it's stuck being one of our denominators. And we know that when we have a linear denominator, the numerator is just going to be a constant, in this case, capital A. But when we have a quadratic denominator, uh, the numerator must assume linear form, hence why we have bx plus c. Now, we claim that this, this um, sum of two rational expressions, is supposed to equal this one rational expression. If that's so, what we're going to do next, as we did in uh, part 8, is get common denominators, which amounts to, in the case of this expression, multiplying it numerator and by numerator and denominator by this guy, right? So to multiply by x squared plus x plus 1 here, and then to do the same here, x squared plus x plus 1. And then this other guy, we're going to multiply numerator and denominator by x minus 1. And we do this so that we have um, a common denominator. And that common denominator, notice, is going to be x cubed minus 1. And uh, both this and this, and that's good because we need it to be, right? Um, and so then, uh, for the left side to equal the right side, all we'd require is the sum of this guy and this guy be equal to 1, which is what I've written right here. Yeah? Okay, cool. So let's backtrack and um, look at only our important um, equation, which is all the way at the bottom, right? Okay, cool. All right. So now in this equation, what we're going to do is uh, let x equal 1 because um, that should help a lot. If we let x equal 1, because what, what we have left to do, obviously, is to solve for a, b, and c, namely capital A, capital B, and capital C. So if we let x equal 1, notice that this whole thing becomes 0. And this here is going to be a times 1 plus 1 plus 1, so 3a. So we're going to have 3a on the left side, and on the right side, we'll have 1. So we have 3a is equal to 1. Great because that'd mean a is equal to a third. Cool. All right, we'll keep in mind that a is a third. Uh, but this quadratic has its lowest point at um, one half, um, actually negative one half comma uh, three fourths. So this quadratic in short is never zero, is never um, zero or smaller. And so we can't set it equal to zero to get anything real, right? Uh, but what we can do is, um, now, to solve for um, b and c, which is what we have left to do, we could just randomly pick two x values. And obviously, we want to um, pick convenient x values. So one of them, we're going to let x equal 0. And when we do, that's very useful, because here we're just going to get a times 1. Um, so that's a. And then in this part, when x is 0, notice this is going to be 0. So we just get c times negative 1. So negative c um, equals 1. So we're going to get a minus c equals 1. Nice. Let me just double check that that did in fact happen. Yeah, that's a. And then this is gone. So we get c times negative 1. So a minus c is equal to 1. Good. And then next we're going to let um, x equal, um, we've already let it equal 1. So let's say negative 1. 
I think negative 1, 0, and 1 are the easiest numbers to plug in. So when we let x equal uh, negative 1, this is going to be positive 1. And then this is going to be negative 1 when combined with positive 1 is going to be 0. So we just have a, nice. And then uh, we're going to get, and this part, um, we have negative b, right? And then we have uh, plus c, and then times negative 2. So we have negative, um, and then it's going to be negative, sorry, it's going to be plus, and then it's negative b and then plus c, right, uh, times negative 2 uh, is going to equal 1. Now, the first equation, actually, this one, is going to allow us to get to, um, to, get to uh, c, right, because we already know a is a third. Uh, specifically, from that first equation here, uh, we can write the following, which is that a third... Uh, minus c is equal to 1 or 3 thirds. So uh, taking the c over to the right side and subtracting 1 or 3 thirds from both sides of this equation, we can get 1 third minus 3 thirds is equal to c or uh, negative 2 thirds is equal to c. So in addition to a, we have um, c now. I was going to write a, but it's c. So we have c is equal to negative 2 thirds. Yeah. Okay, cool. And um, that's going to allow me to erase a lot of stuff, specifically this, right? Okay. And we already had a second equation, or actually our third equation in total. But yeah, the second of the pairing that we thought we were going to make. And that equation says A, right? Uh, which we know is um, a third. So let's write that right here. So a third, and then plus, um, and it's negative 2 times um, b is just going to be 2b and then it's going to be minus 2c is equal to 1 once we distribute that minus 2 to both of the terms in, in, in the parentheses right there right okay cool but we know c we just found out that it was negative 2 thirds so we can backtrack a little bit here and write instead of c negative 2 thirds and then equals 1 and we'll be able to solve for b because so, now we have a third uh, plus 2b, and then it's going to be plus 4 thirds is equal to 1. But a third and 4 thirds make 5 thirds, so we have 5 thirds plus 2b is equal to 1, uh, which then means um, I want to keep writing uh, lower and lower, so let me get rid of this. We could have moved it elsewhere, but uh, yeah, actually, let me move it somewhere. Oh no, sorry, lasso. Um, okay, so here let's move it over here so that in case we need uh, to recall on which which we will we could just rely on our memory but whatever whatever okay so 2b is going to equal uh, 1 which is 3 thirds minus 5 thirds so 2b is going to equal negative 2 thirds which would mean b is equal to negative 4 thirds and that was the last guy we were after right so we just found out what B is. Um, we have A and C, so nice. Let's uh, take this value of B and put it close to its relatives, A and C. Yeah, okay. In fact, A is kind of distant, so let's get A closer to its relatives. There we go. Um, and then now we can erase a lot of stuff. Um, specifically, we can erase all of this and... Um, we will have the following because uh, all we were after was the value of a and c so that we can claim our integral is just this guy with a, b, and c, not just a and c. But yeah, um, now we could write the following, which is our integral is the same as the integral of um, basically this, right? Right, this is what we're writing, dx, dx, and dx here, right? Okay. Um, and um, I could get rid of this right here and slide for reference just in case we need the space. But yeah. All right, never mind, never mind. Okay, uh, we're good. Um, <clears throat> all right, so, so, so a over x minus 1 is going to be, um, we have a as a third, so a third, and I could write it in front of the integral, 
1 over x minus 1, um, which was video um, 7 in this series, right? 1 over the integral of 1 over x minus 1. Okay, dx, and then uh, we have plus, um, and then we're going to get the integral of b, which is negative 4 thirds, um, and then x, and then c, which is negative 2 thirds. Um, and notice all of this divided by this quadratic, but before we do that, notice I can factor out a negative 2 thirds from this and um, put it in front of the integral, and it will really suit us to do that, so let me do that right now. So instead of plus, we have minus um, two-thirds, and then it's integral of, um, and out of this negative four-thirds, if we take out negative two-thirds, we're going to get two, and then it's going to be two x, and then the c, all of it, we've taken out, right? So we're just going to get plus one, um, and then divided by um, x squared um, plus x um, plus one dx, cool. And um, as far as I am concerned, we no longer need this, but let me just slide it a little. Okay, cool. Now, look at this, fellas. Uh, if we made u substitution on this part, and that's all we we're worried about, uh, and let u equal um, x squared uh, plus x plus 1, look at what du is. Du is 2x plus 1 dx, which is exactly the numerator. How nice, because we've got uh, 1 over u du. So that's just ln of u. So this integral is done, because we just have uh, a third ln of um, x minus 1 um, plus c, but we'll wait on the plus c, and then minus 2 thirds ln of um, x squared plus x plus 1, and then plus c. Yeah? Cool. This is our final answer. I hope you enjoyed this and take care.